Hey everyone. So tonight I had a little bit of extra time, so I wanted to record something that uh, someone actually had asked about a minute ago. And I apologize it's taking me a minute to get here, but here it is, so I hope it still counts. Um, I made a uh, terminal uh, Pokemon game that, well, game's a strong word for it, but this was basically back when I was learning about classes and components and things of that nature at Lambda, so I wanted to expand on that and make something of my own. Um, so what you can see here is I've got my get bash terminal right above me it's supposed to be and then over here I got my code and we'll break this down a little bit because this is gonna be a really quick section it, it's nothing too crazy uh, it runs from node so we just do node pokemon dot js choose your pokemon um, I am a fan of Bulbasaur in his line and then as you can see it auto battles for you. So uh, we've got Charmander used Scratch, did 3 damage. Bulbasaur used Tackle, it was a critical hit, did 5 damage. Uh, the speed stats uh, play effect in who goes first, so theirs worked out close enough that Bulbasaur was able to go twice in a row there. And did 6 more damage, Charmander used Ember, ugh, and that was a critical hit, that did 9 damage. Oh, and then he went a dent. <laughs> Jesus, look at this, kicking my ass. Uh, and then players Bulbasaur has fainted. So like I said, it's it's nothing crazy. Um, if you cancel out, it'll say game over. So that's the thing. That's a little feature it does. Um, I want to win one. There we go. So yeah, see, I don't even, I don't even see. Uh... Huh. So that's that's a little bit of a thing I need to probably fix because I did not. Is Venusaur in this? I don't know. I did something weird. Cause I, I know. Let's do. Is Charizard an option? I don't. It's been a minute. It's been like a month since I've looked at this. So I, I guess I default back down to Bulbasaur if it's not on the input. I know I put some of their evolutions in, but not all of them. So that's my fault I probably could have looked at this a little closer before trying to show this off but there yeah huh why do you keep saying that let's just go completely different here let's say Squirtle you gonna give me a Squirtle okay there we go so see so yeah Venusaur is in there so I, I think it's just throwing out a uh, Bulbasaur as the opponent but it's labeling it as the players cuz uh, yeah like here the Iva Steel or would be mine it shouldn't say players it should say opponent This one is this one's wrong, so I don't think. Well, no, I have Venusaur. Did I spell it wrong? I don't know. Anyway, I'll stop focusing on that. I think you all very much get the general idea of how this works in the terminal. So uh, let me just get rid of that because it's going to go away anyway. Um, as you can see here, I got my constructor function for my Pokemon. And it's a game object. I call use call to bind this and the attributes very important to bind your this when it's needed um, and then we set up the name, the level, the moveset, and the type of the Pokemon uh, from there we got the prototype to uh, yeah, okay yeah that, that imports the game object prototypes from above it's not really important and then the pokemon.prototype.battle function here you, know, you got your target and then you've got the move it wants to use uh, so we got the attack points equals this dot move set move so this boils down to whatever move you want Plus this dot attack. This is the stat attack not like the name of the move. That's so this would be like Bulbasaur used Vine Whip and it has an attack stack of 12 and then we take the target defense and subtract that from this total um and then from there we get this crit chance which is a random number between 1 and 100 and that's rounded down from the new decimals um, so you've got about a 30 percent chance of getting a critical hit um, and this is the string template for you know what you saw there the dialogue and then the attack points plus equals itself raised okay so yeah it's basically you add half of the attack points back to the attack points and that's what I set up for the critical damage um, 
if for some reason the math went weird and uh, the attack was less than one, because I had that happen a couple times. Uh, for some reason, I use a lot of random number generators in this, so. But I, I want to make sure everything was always at least one, because I'm. That's true to the original games, I believe. I don't think you could do zero damage. Um, and then obviously the target's HP minus the attack points, and then we return the. Um, you know, such and such did this much damage on you know whatever. Um, do to do, do use this move. This is all basically the same right there. Okay, so here we got our constructor function for the stats, which um, it's prototype down here. Pokestats.prototype comes from the Pokemon prototype we said above. Uh, this basically consists, once again, I use call. <laughs> uh, this HP is the stats HP. This attack is stats attack. This defense is stats defense. That sounds really redundant. I always used to look at code like that and thought it would make no sense to me ever, but and then when you come down to these, it makes a little bit more sense because, uh, but like we got this.hp equals stats.hp. So, um, Bulbasaur is a new for version of Pokestats. It grabs this HP, which is passed in into the stats, and then it assigns stats.hp, which is this, to this.hp, the specific instance of Bulbasaur. Um, so if we had different bubble sores with different HPs, each one would be able to persist and maintain their own uh, data. And you can see I, I've got a lot of stuff up here, but for the actual stats, I limited to that. I think the other stuff's up here. Yeah, name, level, move, and type. So I got Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, and Venusaur. Just kind of threw in some arbitrary levels, moves, and uh, damn it, just you know, kind of didn't want them all to be the same but kind of put them all in the ballpark of each other, like each leveled evolution. So like Charmander and Bulbasaur are about the same, and then Ivysaur and Charmeleon are about the same. But anything that's like a higher evolution than another one's just out of, uh, out of the league there. So, okay, so we have Charmeleon, but not Charmander, or Charizard. And then just Squirtle. <laughs> Interesting, I got a little lazy there. Um, down here, I guess I got the battle function. So we got Pokemon 1 which is just a global variable I'm going to be using. And then we've got the, uh, okay, this is where I import the read line. Uh, I guess you'd call it a library? Uh, I'll be 100% honest, I don't know if that's considered a library. This shows my limited back-end knowledge here. But anyway, so we import read line, which is how I was able to prompt from the terminal on the back side. And then we've got random number, which is, oh, okay, yeah. So basically, this is a random number that's going to be set up between 1 and the number of Pokemon I've included in the game. And just set up a switch statement so that way your opponent would just randomly be chosen. It would just be this random number generated and then the switch would check to match the case to the random number and then give you the uh, Pokemon 2, which is your opponent. Uh, this is where we set up the terminal interface with input and output. Uh, excuse me, we uh, prompt for choose your Pokemon here, and then we add, call the prompt. Uh, we got another function here. Okay, so yeah, this is Fancer equals Squirtle, and Pokemon 1 equals Squirtle, also Pokemon 1 equals Bulbasaur, so that was pretty basic. Oh, I wonder if that's why, because I thought I had taken that out. But anyway, wait. Is that really, is that really how I've done this? Choose your Pokemon. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll have to debug later. Sorry, I get distracted whenever I go back through my old code. And then the whole uh, battle system is just set up through a while loop, which is while Pokemon 1's HP is greater than 0 and Pokemon 2's HP is greater than 0. And for those of you that are watching this who aren't completely familiar with Boolean operators, basically and means that if this is true and this is true, the loop will continue, but should either one of these become false, the loop will break. So basically, if either one of their HP is, you know, zero or less, um, should be zero or less, then it'll break out of the loop and end the game. So um, this is where we've got the Pokemon speed. It gets pulled up, you know, from the stats we set up earlier, and it's mixed into the 
math here, you, you get a random speed stat between uh, one and the highest of that speed stat. So your Pokemon actually moves at different speeds per turn. Um, you've got a random move selector. As you saw, I didn't select the own moves. That was something I was planning on going back and putting in. But uh, this isn't a, a project I necessarily abandoned, but something I'm going to go back to when I have more time. And I, I want to put, you know, some kind of interface with it other than just the terminal. But it's still f a little fun. It, it was a lot of fun to make. I'll say that. Um, and then obviously, you know, if this is whichever Pokemon has the greater speed goes first. Um, I don't think this console log ever popped up. That's in it. I have a lot of console logs in here that I don't remember seeing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it has fainted. Anyway. Um, it gets down to there. It, it faints, it breaks, and then it breaks again. So, yeah, this is that check there. That's why I didn't have the equals and above. Um... It's, it's a lot of repetitive stuff because you got to account for which player is doing which action and then the other player could feasibly do that action, so I do account for that as well. Um, and that's basically it here. They just go through and knock the crap out of each other till they get down to zero or less. And then it exits the process, it exits the uh, terminal prompt. And then down here, on uh, terminal on close, and this is where we get our game over because it's uh, process exit one. And the default is zero, so that's how read line works. Um, I used to have this battle start function down here. Is that still in here? Was that one of these functions I was reading and just completely skipped over? To find out. I think battle start, not me. Eh, one of one, so you can just go away. I, I typically use a lot of console logs and commenting out code and stuff like that whenever I go through. But yeah, um, so uh, it's a it's a short little video, but this was basically going over my little Pokemon game. Like I said, this was this was a lot of fun to make. Um, not very practical outside of trying to learn to work. That like I was working with prototypes is the big thing, um, and creating these constructor functions here. Uh, binding this, you know, those were the, this right here is essentially what I was practicing. And then um, one of the section leads from Lambda actually was talking to me about it. And she suggested I use readline for my input, so that's what evolved into all this. The other hundred lines of code here just came from that one suggestion. Uh, she, she helped me get set up with this, so that was really cool. But yeah. Thank you all for watching, as always. There is something wrong with this. I'm going to have to figure this out. It is broken, and that means I probably didn't push an update to GitHub at some point. Where was I want to try one thing, and, and then... Answer. Shouldn't... Okay. I'm gonna go out on a limb here. Pokemon 1 equals answer. This is basically what I want to happen. Let's see if. Okay, yeah, that didn't work. Oh, no, I know I, for a fact I didn't. Um, yeah, so this is an outdated version. I'm sorry. Uh, this is in between me putting the extra Pokemon in and me modifying this to be able to select the Pokemon because I remember I had to put a uh, well actually this will be a real quick way to verify this but I wanted it to be case insensitive so I put yeah there's no two lowercase method here so what I did was I took the answer and then I converted it all to lowercase and then basically set up it, I don't remember if it was an if else if block thing going or if it was another uh, switch statement, but I did one of those two to basically, you know, no matter how you typed it in, it would read it as valid as long as the characters were correct, and then it would assign the correct Pokemon based off of that. So sorry about that. I really, uh, really didn't realize that I didn't push that. I might, I need to find the original file because I actually just uh, cloned this. So yeah.
thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If there's anything else you all want to see that I've done, uh, just feel free to check out my GitHub. You can look at the code, you can look at the apps, or if you see something and you don't feel like messing in my code, just let me know and I can do a video like this on just about anything that's on there. I have a lot of crap on there, but I like seeing my progress and I like keeping track of things and GitHub allows me to do both just by uploading everything that I've made. Um, if you find the right repository, you actually will find the first website I ever made. Uh, it was my last semester of college before deciding to drop out and join a coding boot camp. And while looking at that, it just kills me on the inside. It was so bad. But that's for another time. Thank you all again, and I'll see you in the next one.